In old Derbyshire, there once lived a man who planned and who plotted an odd business plan. A performer was he, an actor, in fact, whose name will forego for matters of tact. The actor, some say, was a curious man, on the fringe of society for all his life span. That his ma passed in childbirth was not a strong start. But there was something much stranger which set him apart. Our actor, you see, was born with a gift. Not for chatting to girlies, for footy or thrift. But for seeing the boundary between the living and the dead. His whole family tree used to visit his bed. The key to the mystery remains unprovided. But remember, his birth and a death coincided. Whatever the cause, the gift was a curse. For whenever he neared, other children dispersed. What made matters worse, his dead family were crooks. With plans for wrongdoing, they tried to lure him from books. A straighter path was enforced by a just benefactor who nurtured his dream to one day be an actor. So as he wrestled with Brecht, the ghosts he ignored, his legs cased in tights as his toes trod the boards. He did his best with the method and tried hard with the bard, but with no discernible talent. Making a living was hard. <gasps> Point. With no money for food, he must do something drastic. So he turned to his family of fantastic phantasmics. That he'd ignored them so long had left them aggrieved. But, okay, as he was kin, they'd help him succeed. He laid out before them a get-rich-quick scheme. A pricely ghost walk for the cream of the cream. Will it work? Said one. Of course! Said another. I'm so proud of you. Said his dead, doting mother. To get things kick-started, our hero begins with a tour of the scene of some terrible sins. They take in at first a grim torture chamber to see the rack, the cat and things even stranger. Yet some of the group had rebukes for their host. Come, come now, young man. We are just here for the ghosts. My, my dear guests, these are but a few simple facts. But if you so wish, let's to the climax. <laughs> The spirit of Charles Darwin manifested from thin air, captivating the audience in a manner so rare. His life's work had been a scientific revolution, but since passing he now lectured on post-death evolution. With this awesome display of undead distraction, the scene was now set for some light-fingered action. Through purses and pockets, even lockets were lifted, the guests still entranced by the ghostly shapeshifter. The actor's machinations were superbly effective, though the pillaging ghouls were not quite undetected. For one of the guests was keener-eyed than the rest, a naughty boy named Charlie, an angel-faced pest. The night, as nights must, drew to its natural conclusion, the crime still unnoticed in all the confusion. Little Charlie strolled in and, after a greeting, laid his cards on the table and demanded a meeting. I see you have a large crew of thieving mobsters and I've caught you with hands redder than lobsters. So why don't you listen to this proposition and perhaps with the law you'll avoid a collision. 
If all of your guests who came to be frightened get home to discover that their wallets have lightened, they'll swiftly lose custom. The scandal spreads quick. So what I propose is just one simple trick. I'm sure you have a forger when you're swag bagging drove who can produce recreations of your guests' finest troves. Delve into their pockets, swap the real with the fake, and no one need know that your clan's on the take. My goodness. You're so ruthless and lacking in shame. But if your plan comes to pass, then we've both much to gain. A youth so free from scruples should be cause for despair. But, for now, let's be partners. Come on, put it there. 70-30? Said the actor. 50-50. The youth. My advice, sir, you'll take it, or I'll uncover the truth. If this store is immoral, then the moral be this. Ghosts are not to be trusted, but then neither are kids. So be sure next time you feel a ghost in your measure, keep one eye on your offspring and the other on your treasure.